Hello and welcome to a windy BT Murrayfield for the final of the Boys Schools Cup 2022, the first in three years. We have seven schools competing in four separate matches today and we're going to start in Dam Health Stadium for the Under 16 Shield where North Berwick High School took on Queen Victoria School. It was deadlocked up until the 13th minute where after a tap penalty from five metres out, Queen Victoria School took the lead when Sam Lueni found a gap and dotted down. His conversion added an extra two points to give a 7-0 lead. Lueni was at it again when he scored a brilliant second in the 21st minute. He sidestepped his way through the North Berwick defence and put the ball down under the posts. This didn't however affect North Berwick, who then hit back through Max Barber, who forced his way over from close range after 26 minutes. And less than a minute later, they had a second try as well. Finlay Mitchell won the race to a grubber kick and dived on the ball over the line, reducing the deficit to just four points. Both teams were giving it their all in front of a loud and supportive crowd at Dark Health Stadium. And in the 30th minute, North Berwick took the lead. Finlay Mitchell scored in the corner for his second try of the game and Joe Hunter scored a wonderful conversion from the left corner. It was 17-14 to the East Lothian side as the half-time whistle blew. However, the second half belonged to Queen Victoria School. Nine minutes into the second half, they regained the lead with a try in the right-hand corner from their debutant and the youngest player, Jason Thapa. And at the 50-minute mark, Sam Lueni was back in action. He completed his hat-trick with an incredible solo try, gathering his own kick and sprinting under the sticks before converting it himself. North Berwick continued to battle hard and had some near opportunities to add to their score, but they couldn't quite capitalise. Jay Sean Thapa got his second and Queen Victoria's fifth try of the day in the 57th minute as he dived over in the right hand corner. This was the final score of the game, with the full time score ending North Berwick 17, Queen Victoria School 33. Oh, I'm feeling amazing. I think the boys put in a big shift. It was very, very good today. I'm feeling, I never felt better. This is a milestone for me and the boys, so yeah, I'm feeling amazing. And what was it like to play here at Sam Stadium? Oh, it was, a, it was an amazing experience. Uh, never played on a pitch like this. It's always just down on the fields, down at the park. Um, but yeah, really good. Usually playing on slanted pitches on hills, but it feels good to play on a flat pitch. And yeah, to be of all the boys, it's amazing. It's um, oh, so proud of the boys, uh, some real, real tough battles to get here and once again they had to dig really deep to, uh, to get through that, you know, half time came in three points down um, after going up and we had to really dig deep and, and turn it around that second half and they, you know, they were, they were just brilliant, I thought, that, that, so, so proud of them. Queen Victoria School were back in action in the under-18 Shield final, also in Damhill Stadium, as they took on Loretto School. Queen Victoria took the lead in the 11th minute after they were awarded a penalty in front of the post. Amino Bogidrow opted for a drop kick instead of kicking from the tee and put it between the sticks. But Loretto got the opening try of the encounter and went in front just two minutes later, with Henry Thomas crashing over. Captain Harry Bone slotted the conversion to make the score 7-3. Loretto continued to press and got a second try in the 19th minute. Joss Arnold died over from a metre out. In the 24th minute, Loretto had their third. 
Good footwork from Finn Duraj saw him sidestep three defenders on his way under the posts. Duraj got his second, Loretto's fourth and the final points of the first half in the 30th minute when he intercepts him in midfield and ran into the corner. Loretto went further ahead in the 40th minute when Harry Bone found a gap at the side of a ruck and stretched over the line. Five minutes later, we saw the second hat-trick of the day in Damhill Stadium. The Loretto forwards had spent several phases on the Queen Victoria school line and they were rewarded when Finn Duraj went over for his third try of the day. And Duraj went one better when he got his fourth in the 56th minute. A line at Moles secured Loretto's seventh try of the day as they were storming away with the lead. Queen Victoria sent their fans home happy at the end when they managed to grab a try with the last play of the game in an entertaining contest. However, Loretto were the winners in the end, 43-8. It's amazing, I mean, we've put in so much hard work this season and we've had some really good results, so we knew this would be like the chair on the pie for us to win this and to win it in front of the school is so good, it's an amazing feeling. I'm very delighted, thanks so much for having us. Um, as you can see, the boys are loving it. It's a, we've worked so hard for it, so I'm just glad we had a, a really great occasion um, here at the Damhall Stadium. While the Shield was taking place in Damhill Stadium, out here the Cups were being contested for. First up we have the Under-16 Cup between Dollar Academy and George Watsons. With a loud and supportive crowd behind them, Dollar Academy and George Watsons look set to make an absolute classic on the BT Murrayfield pitch. It was the Edinburgh base side that took the lead first, with fullback Fergus Ferguson placing the ball down between the posts to claim five points. Andrew Cameron followed up with a successful conversion to take the lead by seven. Moments later, they were back on the board as Lewis White made his way back over Dollar's trial line. Andrew Cameron once again at hand to add the extra points. Dollar Academy made continuous efforts to keep within their opponent's 22 and soon they were rewarded with a try in the 15th minute of play, flanker John Hume getting over the line. Angus Crockett made the conversion with ease. But George Watson's response was strong as open side flanker Harrison Wood hurled through the defence to score the team's third try. Andrew Cameron enjoyed a third successful kick. But you can't count Dollar Academy out as Angus Crockett was back in action as he both scored and converted his try. Moments before the half-time whistle, with a line out of some five metres away from Dollar's try line, it allowed the Edinburgh Bay side to show their strength, to push the opponent's pack back over the line as Cameron Geddes scored their final try in the first half followed by Andrew Cameron's fourth conversion. It only took five minutes in the opening stage of the second half for George Watsons to score their fifth try of the game, scored once again by Harrison Wood.
In the 48th minute, Dollar got their first point to the second half, with John Hume getting his second try of the game. But George Watson still have plenty to give, and Captain Michael Connor got his first try of the game. Andrew Cameron slotted another conversion to extend their lead. And just minutes later, Lewis White got his second try of the game. He saw a gap in the Dollars' defence and ran over their line to score. Andrew Cameron added to his streak of successful conversions. It was Dollar, however, who got the last points of the game. And guess Crockett was able to dart his way through the George Watson's defence to score before going on to convert his own try. And despite continuous efforts onwards, it was George Watson's who came out on top to lift the Under-16 Cup. I'm delighted. The boys have worked so hard all year. Um, and it is just reward for them, to be honest with you. They've, they've really stuck in. Um, and, and this was one of our goals this year, and we've managed to achieve it. So I'm, I'm absolutely delighted for them. Oh, I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm really, really proud of me, the boys and the coaches. We've been absolutely phenomenal all season. And just to get here was a great achievement, but we've gone and won it. And the boys were amazing today. We gave 100%. Couldn't ask for more from anyone. As the George Watson's boys celebrated their win, it was time for the main event. The Under-18s Cup between Stuarts Melville and Merkiston Castle. The opening 20 minutes of play saw possession of the ball switch between the two teams several times as both of them fought it out for the opening score, displaying exceptional amounts of talent between them. A number of opportunities were on the cards for both sides to get on the scoreboard, but it was Merkiston who got things underway with a fantastic try from winger Aman Raza who powered his way across the whitewash after 22 minutes of play. Another 10 minutes of entertaining, but for the most part equally match played, followed the both sides struggling to capitalise on their attacking phases. But just minutes before the first half concluded, Merkiston began creeping their way back into Stuart's Melville territory. Stringing the phases together to gain ground, Merkiston were able to add to their tally, with a try from Alex Calloway, who sailed down the right wing with roaring crowds backing him across the line. Stuart's Melville came out the tunnel with a determined outlook. And with just minutes of the restart, they found themselves some five metres out from the try line before unfortunately conceding a penalty. However, they remained unfazed by the near setback and soon found themselves with ball in hand again as they continued to search for five points. And finally, the search was over. Stuart's Melville hard work paid dividends with a try scored from a pick and go by prop Aidan Symes. James Lewis added the extras to take the score within three points. But Merkiston were quick to respond and attempt to shut their opponents down. And some five minutes later, inside centre Lachlan Ferguson scored Merkiston's third try of the evening. Similar to the first half, after a further 10 minutes of well-matched contest played out, it was a line-out on Stuart Melville's 15 metre line which would open up the play for Merkiston to bag their fourth try as they engroached further into the opposition's half. Stuart Melville worked hard to drive Merkiston back, but it wasn't quite enough to stop the ball making its way across the left wing to find Aman Raza for his second drive of the night. <laughs> 
Merkestown was soon dealt a blow as their number eight Tom Curry was shown a yellow card by referee Johnny Perham for a dangerous tackle which would see him down to 14 players for the remainder of the game. Stewart's Melville looked to get back on the scoreboard again as the sides packed down for a scrum metres away from Merkestown's try line. Winning the ball from the scrum, Merkestown looked to get rid of the ball from the danger zone. But Stuart's Melville were able to gather the ball and began to move it through their hands to the wing. Unfortunately, the last pass to their winger was called forward, dashing their hopes for another score. And some moments later it was all over as the referee blew the whistle. Merkiston Castle retained the under-18s cup, which they had previously won in the 2018-19 season. Uh, we feel great. We've been looking forward to this all season and it's just... It's just awesome to win it. All the boys have been looking forward to it. Especially after a terrible season last year where we didn't get to play any games. We're doing this for the year above as well. Absolutely love those boys, so it's a great feeling. Yeah. Yeah, top of the world. Uh, I mean, so so happy for the boys. I mean, as you can see, the, this means the world to them. And just so happy just to see them go out there and express themselves and, and play rugby and, and, get, and get the result in the end. And so the day here at BT Murrayfield is finally complete. Congratulations to our winners of the Shield, Queen Victoria School and Loretto School, and congratulations to our winners of the Cups, George Watsons and Merkiston. Don't forget that in a few weeks' time, we are back here for the Youth Cup Finals on the 27th of March. We hope to see you then, and thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.